How many summits have I been to? U of I summits. Um, they have, I think it's been since the very beginning. I went to the first one, uh, was it 1999, I think, was the first one? I think that was it at the Doubletree in Scottsdale. And I remember it being a very impressive event. Um, I have been with um, the BFI summits as a volunteer for, uh, since 1999, so I, I stopped counting the years. Um, but I, I always have been impressed with the quality of the people that uh, come to present at these conferences. There's always a good blend between skills, skills teaching, and um, the real heart and soul of, of psychotherapy. Um, they're very good with putting together addiction conferences and mixing in a lot of different therapeutic approaches, which I think is really helpful for a well-rounded clinician to have a, exposure to a variety of of topics. The authors are, are generally very well known. Uh, sometimes they get local um, uh, presenters and I'm always learning something new. Um, the BFI summits always keep on the, the edge of uh, what's new and exciting in our field and that, that kind of keeps things fresh for me every year. Um, one thing that I found really helpful is the, the e-summits because sometimes you're at a conference and you've got two great presenters and they're both presenting at the same time and you have no idea which one you should go to. But now there's no worries because you can always uh, purchase the DVD or go online even if you don't have time and uh, catch the presenter that you weren't able to see live. Oh, um, David Burns, uh, always one of my favorites. Uh, Colin Ross, absolutely brilliant mind. Um, always something new from him. Uh, Harville Hendricks, because he's so, he's so well grounded in, in relationships, and uh, uh, we had Nathaniel Brandon a couple of times. I, I saw him, I think, I, I think I saw him both times. I mean, wonderful, uh, masterful speaker on the topic of self-esteem, and he's had a very basic method for, for years, and he's just stuck to it and refined it, and he's been uh, a, a real core teacher for me in terms of working with my clients. The energy is always good from the other participants. We see the same ones over and over every year. And uh, you can tell that that's a really good testimonial to the, the quality of the summit. So years, year after year, we get the same people coming in from California, all over the country. And uh, that's pretty encouraging, I think, to, to have that. And it, it, it does knit people together almost like a family. It's really nice. All right. Okay, the BFI conferences are unique because we get a lot of people coming back year after year. You recognize faces even, even if you don't know their names. These are people that have come back year after year after year. And you get to know each other, you talk, um, you get a sense of, of uh, community, uh, of the, the larger therapeutic community. A lot of us in private practice are, are uh, isolated and we know a few people and it's really nice to come out to a, an environment like this and share ideas and um, learn from the the masters, you know, the experts in the field. There's great networking. There's always an opportunity to, to meet other people, uh, talk with them. The conference presenters tend to encourage a lot of discussion and uh, exchange. It's not so much lectures. Uh, they, they present their material. There's a lot of give and take. And the, the, it's a pretty active uh, audience, for, uh, by and large, I would say. Oh, there's so, so much, I don't even know where to, where to start with that. Um, David Burns, primary for the uh, cognitive behavioral therapy skill set. Always great to hear from him. Uh, he'll come back and he'll, he'll present the material, but he'll always apply it to a new problem area like anxiety or depression. Uh, and he's always a very lively speaker. I'd say you've got to try it. This is, this is the best in the country.